happen. It's an experience for consciousness which is neither male or female because it's all possibility. This is from the BBC uh, website. Scientists have been able to take control of flies' brains to make females behave just like males. Researchers genetically modified the insects so that a group of brain cells that control sexual behavior could be switched on by a pulse of light. The team was able to get female fruit flies to produce a courtship song behavior usually only seen in males. Just so you manipulate the computer. Why do birds suddenly start singing together when the sun comes up? I mean, is there someone with a bat on? Go! Why do Freaky the Chicken start crowing? at dawn when the testosterone came in. It's a program. It's the same with um, emotions, where we think the emotions are who we are. But you can fundamentally change your emotional state through drugs, through chemicals, through things like mercury. Mercury uh, in, in fillings can change your personality. can change your personality by drinking the shite in, in, in food and drink, these chemical cocktails. That's what's happening to so many kids. How can, how can even emotions, as we know them, be what we are, when chemicals can change the emotions that we have? It's to do with the way we decode reality. And uh, we are receiver transmitters of information. Like we're taking from the worldwide cosmic web and we're adding to it. And how interesting and appropriate that one of the great ways or great means of receiving and transmitting is through crystals, quartz crystals. And it turns out the human body is a gigantic liquid quartz crystal. The membrane of every cell, and we have trillions of them, is a quartz crystal, a liquid crystal. The earth is a gigantic crystal. Every grain of sand, for goodness sake, is a crystal. And the earth too is receiving and transmitting information within this cosmic web. DNA is a receiver transmitter of information and it's made that way. This is an article on DNA. From the characteristic form of this giant molecule, a wound double helix, the DNA represents an ideal electromagnetic antenna. On one hand it is elongated and thus a blade which can take up very well electrical pulses. On the other hand, seen from above, it has the form of a ring and thus is a very magnetical antenna. We are receiving and transmitting all the time through what we think is the body computer. And the energetic auric field connects into us through what we call chakra points, from a word, Sanskrit word meaning wheels of light. And these connect into what we call the physical body through the endocrine uh, system of glands, two of which include the pituitary and the pineal gland, which together make up what we call the third eye. The ability to get out there through the sixth sense. It's like that Muse song says, if you could, we could flick a switch and open your third eye, we would know that they'd never be afraid to die. Words to that effect. Exactly, because we'd be out there. Now, anything that can shut these down holds us in five sense reality and stops us from breaking out into the greater self. That's where they want us and that's where they've got so many people, the vast majority, in that state, in a false identity. The world looks so solid, I grant you, but it can't be. It can't be, even though it seems to be. And if you bang your head on the wall, again, like walking through the fire, believing you're going to get burned, bang, you'll bang your head. But it can't be, because the world is made up of atoms, and as quantum physicists have shown, atoms have no solidity. How can something which is basically empty space make up a solid world? It can't. The reason it appears to is because the information in the waveform metaphysical universe is decoded through into apparent solidity. Again, it's just the way we decode reality that gives it form. We take information from a disk, we put it on the screen, it seems to have time-space solidity, but it doesn't. It's just information being read, and that's exactly what's happening to us. The reason it appears solid and it appears three-dimensional is because we live in a holographic world. We see holograms, you can buy them in the shops, where they appear to be three-dimensional, but actually they're not. It's just the illusion of the way they're made. And how they make them is they have a laser, part of it goes across the object they want to photograph, 
Another part goes directly onto a photographic plate, and then the part that's passed across the object goes onto that plate, and they collide. Those two parts of the laser collide, and they create, here we go, a wave form. We call it in uh, holographics an interference pattern. It's like dropping two pebbles in a pond and then the waves they create collide and that is a waveform representation of where those pebbles fell, how heavy they were, how high they fell from, etc., how big they were, etc. And this is what the waveform again looks like on a holographic print. It's information. It seems to be nothing. It looks like a fingerprint, appropriately, actually. But what is it? But you fire a laser at that, and suddenly a three-dimensional, and the best of them, a very solid-looking image comes up. This is our, we create our reality. It's holographic. This guy um, is in an, in an Australian city, I think it was Melbourne, but he was projected as a hologram onto a stage in Adelaide. This is one that CNN did. So we are creating a holographic uh, version of this information, just like a hologram does in our heads. That's where it comes from. It's this construct. And how funny, I've been saying this for years, and then um, I come across this very, very mainstream New Scientist magazine uh, in January now 2009, and it's front page, you are a hologram projected from the edge of the universe. You don't need to go through great swathes of academia. In fact, it's, 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 it's often the worst thing that can happen because it puts you in, 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 in the box on the postage stamp often to understand reality. You just have to access that which is all around us containing that knowledge. And then you have the question, how can something be a waveform and a particle at the same time, which is what quantum physics has, has found and gone, what? How can that be? Very simple. When you're creating a hologram, the waveform doesn't disappear when the hologram uh, projects itself. They both exist at the same time. The information construct and the decoded uh, holographic form. The particle and the waveform exist at the same time. It's so bloody simple. People think it's so complex. One of the great things about a hologram is that every part of the hologram is a smaller version of the whole. So if you cut a holographic print into four and put a laser onto the four pieces, you don't get a quarter-size version of the whole picture uh, or quarter-size part of the whole picture. You get a quarter-size version of the entire picture. And because of that, this is why these things happen. This is why reflexologists can find points on the hand and the feet and elsewhere that relate to different organs and parts of the body. This is how uh, acupuncture can do it and, and reflexology with, with the points on the ear. Do something here, it affects the heart. Do something here, it affects the liver. Because it's a hologram and it must be like that because every part of the hologram is a smaller part of the whole. Holographic Blood, this uh, book by uh, uh, an American physician called Harvey Biggleton, I met, went to see. He has found um, holographic images in the blood. And I looked uh, through one of his m really powerful microscopes, and as he increased it and increased it and increased it, my blood went from blood as you would perceive it to quartz crystal, when you, you, you got it to the most powerful level. That's what we are, crystals. So because we live in a holographic reality where everything is a smaller version of the whole, that's where we get this, the theme of as above, so below. That's why the human energy field is mirrored by the earth energy field. Because we are a smaller part of the earth hologram and the earth hologram is a smaller part of the greater hologram. And on one level, this reality is digital. And they're creating now, and this is extremely relevant to what I've been saying, they're creating now digital holograms that operate in a slightly different way to the holograms we've had before and some of these digital holograms, that's one are being used at um, promotions to sell products and stuff and people are frightened to walk through the hologram because it looks so solid and that's what this is, digital holograms digital holograms is the reality that we're experiencing in what I call the play out world 
And this is why uh, numbers, numerology works. Numerology can um, predict things and it can make things happen because it is working on this digital level of reality. Computers work on binary systems of on-off electrical charges, just symbolize as one and naught. They're now starting to develop um, trinary computers with a third number. And the human brain works how? On binary and trinary on-off, etc., electrical charges. And of course the uh, AC, G, and T codes of the DNA all connect into this. So while in the Matrix movies we saw the projection of beyond the physical world, it was a digital world, so is ours, that's exactly what it is. And like I say, scientists are not sussing any of this stuff in terms of the mainstream because they focus on their own discipline, their own individual dot, and they don't connect the dots and therefore they can't see the picture. I watched a, um, I watched a program the other day. It was a mainstream science program and it asked the question for at least an hour, I think it was an hour, what's the biggest number? And they were going to these bloody numbers that went on and on and on and on, disappearing up there, trying to work it out. Well, I'll tell you the biggest number. That's the biggest number. Infinity. There is no biggest number. There is only all possibility. And numbers are the digital level of this reality. And because of that, numbers represent vibrational states. As a result of that, you can manipulate reality through numbers and numerology. Because you're manipulating that level of the decoded construct. So what does all this mean? We live a false identity. We think we're humans when we're consciousness. We're multi-leveled awareness. Not just the body, consciousness. And uh, some near-death experiences have experienced and then come back to tell the story of what um, they've experienced when they've been through, sometimes they experience it as a tunnel, and then come back when their body releases the consciousness for a short time. And this is one that encapsulates all of it. He said, everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me and about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time, there is no sequence of events, no such thing as limitation of distance, of period, of time, of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to be simultaneously. This body computer is what gives us the delusion of all those things. And I'll just finish on this bit. Key to holding us in servitude is to keep us in the left hemisphere of the brain. We have two, the right brain, the left brain, and we have a bridge called the corpus callosum, which bridges the two and should pass information between the two. And the right brain, they are very, very different uh, states of being. The right brain is the out there, the creative, the connection with all that is. The left brain is what deals in numbers, in language, in sequence, and puts everything in hierarchical structures and all the rest of it. And what the system wants, is wants us in there. Because when we're in there and not in there, we are there. And the whole system is structured to put us there. The education system, everything. I found this, different functions of the right and left brain. What the right brain uh, wants to do is say the color. What the left brain wants to do, language, it wants to say the word. And it's interesting when you try to go through these and say the color, how difficult it is for many people to say the color instead of the word, to say green instead of what the left brain wants, which is yellow. And the functions of the two are massively different. This lady, um, a brain scientist, neuroanatomist called Jill Balty Taylor, became well known when she had a stroke in the 1990s, I think it was. And she had a stroke in the left brain and stayed awake for most of it, and therefore experienced what was happening. First of all, she got onto an exercise bike trying to overcome how she was feeling, and she looked down at her hands, because this left brain decoding system is now not working, and was not decoding reality as it normally did. She looked down, and she saw not hands, she saw claws. As this went on, she could no longer see 